Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. In today's ultimate boa face-off, I'm going to compare two of the most popular island boas, the Pearl Island and the Hog Island boa. I'll compare each boa in five different categories, awarding an individual winner in each category, and the animal with the most individual wins will be declared the overall winner. So stay tuned to see which of these localities will be declared the ultimate island boa locality. For today's face-off, the individual categories are temperament, husbandry, breeding potential, looks and beauty, and finally, the future potential and popularity of the locality boa. So today we're looking at two localities from islands. So we have the Hog Island from a group of two small islands in the Caribbean off the coast of Honduras, and the Pearl Island from Boa from a group of uh, islands in the Pacific off the coast of Panama. Both of these animals you can think of as medium uh, size localities or other words, you know, semi-dwarf localities with adult sizes in the five to seven foot range. They were both formally classified as uh, subspecies of the species boa constrictor, but because of the recent reclassification, they've been reclassified as boa imperator as far as the Hog Island boa, and then either boa imperator sabogae for the Pearl Island, with some people still referring to it as boa constrictor sabogae. Uh, these Pearl Island boas might be the most uh, uh, divergent type of boa. They're much more elongated than other types of boa. And they actually were originally classified in a different gen genus, Epicrides, along with the rainbow boas as Epicrides sabogae. So you can see there's been quite a lot of uh, revisions in boa taxonomy over the last few years. It'll be interesting to see what the future holds. As far as the snakes themselves, I don't think they give a rat's ass what we call them. They're not going to come back anyway. The Hog Island boa has been kind of a mainstay of her pediculture. These animals have been kept in captivity for at least the last uh, 40 years or so. Uh, many thousands of them were actually imported back in the 80s and 90s, and fortunately they've get, got, been given full protection, so their fate in the wild is now more secure. The uh, Pearl Island boa is a little more recent to her predaculture. These animals first appeared a couple decades ago. They're not as common as Hog Island boas, but they're uh, being kept by quite a number of hobbyists. So overall, these comparisons are always difficult for me. I love both of these types of boas. So in many categories, it's hard to pick a winner. You know, but without further ado, let's get to the comparison and you can see my picks in each category. The first category is temperament. All things being equal, we want boas with docile temperaments that we can take out and handle and that aren't gonna bite us, defecate on us, or try to get away. And the Hog Island boa is great in this category. These are very docile animals. I've never actually had one bite me or even act defensively. I've seen some videos of one that was getting a little nippy, but overall, they're very docile animals. They're also a joy to handle. You can take them out and you can see they kind of move around, you know, slowly. They don't, you know, try to get away. Uh, you know, they interact with the handler. They hold on, but they're not overly squeezy. Just a really nice boa, very enjoyable to handle. You know, similar to many common boas, like, you know, the common Colombian boas you might see at your local pet shop. Just a very docile animal. So overall, uh, very, this, Hog Island boa weights very high on the temperament scale. In contrast, I'd have to rate the Pearl Island boa a little lower on the temperament scale. Although these animals aren't always aggressive, and you can see I'm handling this animal and it's acting relatively docile, in general these animals tend to be more nippy, more bitey, and they try to get away a lot more. They're one of the most active types of boas and they're always moving around. They never seem to sit still. Um, I found it very challenging filming these animals when I was trying to film them outside to get the b-roll footage that I show in these videos. They just kept taking off. You, they just don't sit still. Uh, they just don't want to, you know, stay in one place. So it's definitely a challenge to photograph and they just don't sit still. And another thing I've noticed with these animals is they might be very docile when you're handling them and they're not biting you. But then if you put them down and try to pick them up again, they go feral and strike out at you repeatedly. So these particular animals, in general, they're not the best boa for someone that wants a pet that they can take out and handle. 
And again, although they're not definitely not one of the most aggressive types of snakes, they are less handleable. And you know, overall, I would say that their temperament, as far as a pet snake, is not going to be as docile as a hog island. So for round one temperament, I'm going to award the win to the hog island boa. So that's one win for the hog island, zero wins for the pearl island. Round two is husbandry. We want animals that are going to be easy to keep and have simple, forgiving husbandry requirements, among other things. And in this round, it's a very close match. So the high island boa is relatively easy to keep in captivity with uh, husbandry requirements similar to other common boas, like your typical pet store, Colombian boa or a morph boa. You can keep most adults in, in cages of about four feet long. So, you know, a four foot snake cage makes a good enclosure for a high island boa. This is a uh, two year old sub adult holdback. And these animals, as I mentioned, get to about five to seven feet at full size. They feed readily on a variety of different rodents and birds. And once they're established in feeding, they're not difficult to get to eat. Um, overall, as I mentioned, very simple animal, relatively forgiving husbandry requirements. As long as you do your research, you have the proper equipment, the proper heating devices and thermostats to maintain the necessary uh, temperature requirements, as well as maintaining the necessary humidity, typically 60 to 80 percent or so relative humidity, and they should do fine. Husbandry of the Pearl Island boa overall is fairly similar to the Hog Island or most other types of common boas that you might see. Um, in general, a four foot cage is fine for all but the largest adults. This is a two year old holdback. Um, the adults that produce this animal, uh, the male is around five and a half feet, the female is about six and a half feet, but I haven't had any issues with the husbandry. They've always eaten fine, never regurgitated or anything like that. What I will say is that since the Pearl Island boa is a little bit more active and they tend to be a little bit bigger at full size, they will do better in a cage which has some climbing room and if you provide them uh, branches to climb on. In the wild, they're highly arboreal and hunt for birds and lizards and other prey items in the trees. Um, they also, because of their temperament, they're a little bit more nervous, so they might be a little bit um, more stressed out in a smaller cage. And you know, for this reason alone, I would say that the Hog Island Boa has a slight edge in terms of the ease of husbandry, although the Pearl Island Boa is really not that difficult a species to keep either. So I'm going to award round two, uh, husbandry, the winner to the Hog Island Boa. So that's two wins for the Hog Island Boa, zero wins for the Pearl Island Boa. Round three is breeding potential. We want animals that are going to be easy to breed and have large litters of simple to acclimate offspring. So with that in mind, this is another round where it's literally a toss up between the two. And although neither of them is guaranteed to breed for you, overall they're relatively simple uh, as far as a boa constrictor to breed. And of course boas in general are nowhere near as easy to breed as many other common reptiles. Hog Island boas will generally breed at around a minimum of about four years old for males, five years for females. You don't want to hurry them, you know, similar to other boas. You want to slow grow them so the animals are healthy when it comes time for breeding. And the earliest I breed a male is around four years old for a female around five years old. So this particular animal has around three more years to go. This is a two year old holdback female. They will breed after you cool them for a short time over the winter. Typically I cool down around 15 degrees below the normal temperatures just at night for around two months or so. And you know, when you pair them up in the winter, typically they'll breed after that. I usually pair them up right at the end of the cooling period. And it's relatively simple to get babies. The litter sizes are anywhere from around half a dozen up to around 20 babies, but typically litters are around a dozen or so babies. With the babies, one uh, issue is that they're difficult to get to feed, and I found that Hog Island boas are the most difficult locality boa to get all the babies feeding. And I've, of my litters, typically I'll have anywhere from two to five that just don't want to feed on rodents. 
and you know sometimes they come around and finally they'll end up feeding after a couple months i usually try all the tricks scenting with lizards using bird parts things like that which has been limited success but usually i can get the animals the babies to feed finally after a couple months of assist feeding mouse tails once the babies are eating i never have issues with adults not feeding but it can be frustrating when you have babies that you don't know if they're going to make it or not because they're refusing to feed on their own. Pearl Island boas breed at similar ages and sizes as hog island boas. This guy is a two-year-old holdback male who probably will be ready to breed in about another two years. The cooling period for the Pearl Island boa is similar to the other boas. Um, overall, it's not really difficult to get them to breed if you cycle them right and if they're in good health. And I haven't had di any real difficulty uh, getting uh, gravid females. Pearl Island boas tend to have relatively small litters in terms of the number of babies, but they're relatively large babies in terms of the relative size compared to the mother. A typical litter is anywhere from about five to around a dozen, with the average of maybe eight or nine babies. And as far as the size, the only baby boas I've seen bigger than them at birth are the true red tails. So they probably around uh, 19 to 20 inches or so at birth. So relatively large. Overall, they're easier to get feeding than the hog island boa. Although I have had a few babies in the past that didn't feed from the beginning on uh, live fuzzy mice. Eventually they did take fuzzy mice after assist feeding for a couple months. This is another category that's pretty much a toss-up, but I'm going to have to award the winner of the breeding potential category to the Pearl Island boa because of the greater tendency for the Hog Island babies not to feed. So that's two wins for the Hog Island boa, one win for the Pearl Island boa. The fourth category, looks and beauty, is definitely the most subjective of the five categories. And in this case, it's also pretty much a toss-up. These are both very beautiful animals. They look different from most other types of boas, like you might think of a, a red-tailed boa or a, you know, a common Colombian boa or a morph boa, something like that. And they definitely rate high in the looks and beauty category. The high island boas are basically a hypomelanistic Boa, that is they lack most of the dark pigments and they have this naturally occurring very light color with kind of an overall very light tan with lots of pink and orange highlights especially in their sides they also usually have lots of other uh, more subtle shades of greens and blues uh, you know everyone is a little bit different and you know just beautiful kaleidoscope of colors on these animals they tend to have a lot of speckling as well uh, although some people have selectively bred them to remove the speckling for a more clean look. Although I prefer the more wild type look like this one with a lot of the speckling. Overall, they're just a gorgeous animal, you know, just very beautiful to look at. Um, so I would have to rate them very, very high in the looks and beauty category. The Pearl Island boa is another stunningly beautiful uh, boa constrictor locality. Like hog island boas, they're a naturally occurring hypomelanistic uh, animal with a lot of uh, reduced black pigment and a very light overall color. These animals have a brown color that's kind of more of a golden tannish brown in color. Um, they have reduced saddles. You know, many of them like this one have very few saddles and they have just these blotches mostly on the side. The color of the blotches is this beautiful ochre, orangey, uh, red, brown color, like on the tail. Um, the, they also have a lot of light colors. You know, many of them like this one have these splotches of white on the sides and a lot of white scales. Uh, the head shape is very distinctive. They have a very long kind of flattened head with flared nostrils and very prominent bulging eyes. The eyes in some animals are golden and some of them the orange, just very beautiful. And they have a very interesting head shape. If you look at them from just the right angle, they look almost like an alien, like a Roswell, you know, extraterrestrial alien, just a really cool look. They are definitely the most elongated of the locality of Boas. They're adapted to a life in the trees and they're uh, much uh, slimmer than other boas of the same length. 
overall just a very beautiful animal just shows you kind of the one of the extremes of evolution and boa constrictors uh, to get this body form for life in the trees and then they also have this cool thing where they have a light pinkish uh, orange tongue with dark black or purple uh, speckling on it so they have like a, a multicolored tongue it's just really cool looking so overall as I mentioned this is a very hard pick and I really had to you know think about this for a long time but I'm going to have to award the winner of the looks and beauty category to the Pearl Island boa so that's two wins for the Hog Island Boa, two wins for the Pearl Island Boa. The last category is the popularity and future potential of the locality. So all things being equal, we want to keep and breed boas that are popular and we're not gonna have difficulty finding homes for them. So the Hog Island Boa has been available for at least the last 40 years or so to herpetoculture. And it's one of the most uh, earliest locality boas that entered the hobby. Because of this, they're very popular and every locality boa collector will want to have at least one or two Hog Island boas in their collection. Unfortunately, many people have bred them with common boas and morph boas in the last uh, few years to generate animals called hypo hogs, which are really hybrid animals. And unfortunately, once you cross them with a non hog island boa, you can never get a pure hog island boa back. So unfortunately, the amount of pure, uh, pure hog island boas has declined in captivity. Although since there were many thousands collected originally, it's still relatively easy to find a pure hog island boa. Just make sure you ask questions of your breeder about their breeding animals heritage. In my opinion, hog island boas were ridiculously undervalued for a very long time with animals selling for just a small premium above what a typical common pet store boa would sell for. However, in the last few years, as the supply has dried up, the prices have increased accordingly. And I believe that these animals will remain valuable and popular for many years to come. So as far as popularity and future potential, I foresee the Hog Island Boa as remaining very strong in this area and remaining a hobbyist favorite for many years to come. On the other hand, Pearl Island Boas have never been quite as popular as Hog Island Boas. Uh, when they first became available in herpetoculture, they were selling for very high prices, but the prices gradually came down until they were relatively affordable for quite a while. However, in the last few years, with the increasing popularity of locality boas overall, the prices have risen sharply once again. So overall, they are kind of more of a specialist boa, since they're less handleable than the Hog Island boa. They're less likely to be selected as a pet species, and they're more for a locality boa collectors that's looking for something a little bit different. They do have a small, uh, very dedicated following of boa aficionados that really hold these in high esteem. So although I think that they're will remain popular among a smaller niche of boa collectors. Overall, I'd have to say the Hog Island boa wins in the popularity and future potential. With a final score of three wins to two, the winner in today's ultimate boa face-off, the Battle of the Island Boas, is the Hog Island boa. Although, of course, several categories were extremely close and I imagine you may have picked it otherwise. As always, I'd love to hear your opinions if you would have picked it the same as me or if you would have rated them differently in any of the categories, so please comment below. Also, if you have any ideas for future boa face-offs of two boas to pit against each other, please comment below and I'll see what I can do about accommodating your wishes for a future video. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me via social media. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.